Former President Olusegun Obasanjo is alleging that the federal government is planning to have him indicted through a series of plans to silence him from expressing his concerns over the state of the nation. In a statement by his media aide, Mr. Kende Akiyemi, Chief Obasanjo alleges that his name is on a security watch list and that his safety cannot be guaranteed. He alleges that information at his disposal says security operatives are daily perfecting how to curtail the personal liberties of the former president and pin a crime on him. The statement says, and I quote, Ordinarily, we would not have, been, have dignified these reports with a response, but for the fact that many of these informants are not known for flippant and frivolous talks. We are currently in a nation where the number three citizen is currently being harangued, and the number four citizen is facing similar threat within the same government they serve. There is a groundwell of our nationals that live in fear that they could be hounded, harassed, maimed, or even killed as the battle for the 2019 election takes this worrisome dimension. End of quote. The statement also adds that Chief Obasanjo is ready to face probe again before an independent, objective, and credible panel of inquiry to account for his stewardship in government and beyond. The former president also indicated his intention to continue to exercise his right to free speech in the best interest of Nigeria. Meanwhile, the federal government says it will not be distracted by frivolous allegations. In a statement issued in Lagos, the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, says the administration is too busy trying to clear the mess of 16 years and build on its achievements over the past three years. He said while those who have skeletons in their cupboards should be afraid even of their own shadows, innocent people need not worry about any investigation, whether real or fake. The, president, the minister adds, and I quote, this administration will never engage in a frame-up of innocent citizens as it is neither in the character of President Muhammad Buhari nor in his administration. Only the guilty should be worried, end of quote. The minister said it he was curious that the allegation came a day after a major presidential proclamation reversing some past mistakes to the belief and praise of long expectant Nigerians. The Army Authority and Federal Ministry of Works, Power and Housing have come out to clear the air on an altercation that ensued on Banana Island following the visit of the Chief of Army Staff to the proposed site of Apple Island. While responding to the claim by the residents that their privacy was invaded, the Chief of Civil Military Affairs says the visit was purely in good faith and wonders why the Army boss was resisted on a public asset. Our correspondent Chris Lems has this report. This is an actual footage of residents of Banana Island addressing what they adjudged as an invasion of their private estate by military personnel. The army chief had come to see the proposed site of Apple Island, a project by the Nigerian Army Property Limited, which could only be accessed through Banana Island. To get further insight into the area of dispute, Channels Television paid a visit to Banana Island. Tokumbo Wahab, a resident, tells us why they had to speak up in the face of perceived intimidation. We have the approval from the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing as far back as 2012, if I'm right. And then last year we had the approval from NIWA, Inland Waterways to Landfill, for Jetty. Now, they want to use the same place. They came in here with brute of these military men, pulled down all the works we've done, raised their signage, and then just to come and reclaim this place and use the same entry and exit point. According to him, the implication is that the shopping mall, green areas, and children playing fields will have to give way for the proposed Apple Island to take off. For us, it's a no-no. We, we know the way things work in this part of the world, and um, we've seen Festac run down. We've seen Lecky next door here run down. Like I said to you, the estate is congested. The road, uh, the, sometimes we have traffic. Uh, our facilities can't even take it. But the military authority views this differently. It's a welfare project. It's a project that, uh, you know, has to do with development. And the only access we actually was through uh, Banana Island, but this is a public asset. And so, um, 
you know, for a group that supposedly is representing the community to mobilize a few people and, um, you know, stop the chief of army staff and, uh, you know, uh, that, that really, you know, um, it's not an issue for contention whatsoever. He also hopes the issue will be amicably resolved in order to promote better relationship. And in between them, there is a kind of a uh, road. With the status of the access the area still unclear, That's we visited the federal controller housing in now. Lagos for clarification. The most I can tell you is that the we actually had, there were plans by the federal government to do a phase two of Banana Island. That much. But um, so far, as I know, it's still on the drawing board. The best of my knowledge, that particular place was not given to the, to the um, residents' association. It's still a lay-by that was left there in case this other project decides to uh, take off. At the moment, the various parties are respected to follow the path of peace and work out an implementable plan that will ensure better infrastructure and good neighborliness when the project eventually sees the light of the day. Chris Elams, Channels Television News. Road projects are springing up in different areas of Choir State following appeals from various communities on the terrible conditions of their roads. This also came up with an assurance from the government that no part of the state will be left out in the provision of social amenities. The Choir State Governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, has been out to see some of these construction sites. Two years ago, this Coca-Cola bridge in Choir State caved in due to a flood that ravaged the area. Since then, residents and motorists have had no choice but to apply alternate routes that leave lasting problems on anyone or anything that passes through it. The vehicles that pass through this place are being destroyed. We lost all our observers most of the time. In fact, we are pleading to the government to see to the assistance of this road. Not only has the state governor ordered the contractors handling the project to return to site, he also wants to see the level of damage. After an assessment of the project, the State Commissioner for Works and Transport is given further instructions that will ensure the bridge is no longer compromised in the event of flooding. The last time we, we, we studied, it's about 56 percent. Projects are ongoing in other areas, and the governor tours many of those sites to get briefing from those in charge. Near up to the zero zero to Sango to Kulinde Junction, we are doing the stone base this week and next week, and the asphalt will start. Impressed with progress, the governor promises that infrastructure will spread to all parts of the state. I'm quite impressed with the uh, rate of work and um, we see that everything is going on on schedule and uh, just like we are committed to ensuring that funding is made available as at when due, we can see that uh, we are getting value for money. Obviously this is going to take us to the time scheduled for completion. We are happy with what we are seeing here. Most of the projects are close to being delivered and are expected to be commissioned soon. The CBN has a new deputy governor. Olumide will be telling us more about that and other business stories. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Melinda. Welcome to Business News. President Mohamed Buhari has appointed Mr. Fola Shodun Shunubi, a mechanical engineer, as the new deputy governor to replace Mr. Adebayo Adelabu, the tiring deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. The announcement was made in a statement today by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Gadu Beshehu. Mr. Fola Shodun Shunubi is currently the managing director of the Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, PLC, after assuming the headship of the financial payments, facilitation, and settlement platform in 2012. The nomination of Mr. Palasha Dushonubi is, as new deputy governor, is subject to confirmation from the Senate. 
A former advisor to U.S. President Barack Obama, Mr. Grant Harris, has advised African leaders to pursue a diversified international private capital for investment instead of piling up more sovereign debt from China. Harris, who runs a global advisory firm out of California, told Channel Television today that Africa shall focus on key investment drivers of good governance, rule of law, and integrity of contracts. They're going to be focused on regional integration to make their markets larger and more attractive. And they're going to need to realize that they're competing for capital, not just with their neighbors, but with other states around the world. And I think that they should be trying to attract that capital, not seeking one exclusive partner in the analogy that you used and not really taking sides in disputes between China or the United States on trade issues that don't directly affect them. If I was an African leader, I'd be focused on courting this capital, making sure that the enabling environment is strong. And that goes to governance and rule of law and certainty of contract and many different issues that are going to be the deciding factors for whether businesses come and the type of numbers that we need to see. You mentioned a looming infrastructure gap. You mentioned a lot of impediments. We have to attract that private capital in order to plug that gap. And it all goes back to the investment climate in order to do so. Let's take a look at the NSC now. Nigeria's stock market ends Friday's trading downbeat after staging a strong comeback in four sessions this week amid renewed profit-taking. Uchalauku has more details. Welcome to the Stock Market Report. After a four-day rally, Nigeria's stock market closed Friday's session in the red, down by nearly 1% on the back of profit taken by short-term investors. The sell-off swept across four out of five major sectors of the market, particularly the bank stocks, leading to a 135 billion naira decline in the equities capitalization. Investors' appetite for stocks also suffered in contrast to the previous session this week as over 200 million shares changed hands for 3.88 billion naira in over 4,000 transactions. Japol Oil tops the list of 18 gainers. Owando led 27 other losers, while Dangote Sugar, FBN and GT Bank are top on the ladder in volume of shares turnover for the day. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Uchi Alauku. Finally, as the G7 summit gets underway in Canada, stock markets in Europe and Asia end Friday's session mostly lower, following concerns by investors over world trade. On the other hand, stocks on Wall Street ended positive. And that's it on business news. Please stay tuned for the rest of the news at 10 with Melinda. You first, first bank. Many thanks, Olumide. 35 farmers in Plateau State are part of the first set of beneficiaries of an equipment distribution scheme of the state government which seeks to empower farmers to achieve higher production. The governor, Simon Lalong, warned against the misuse of tractors or the selling of the equipment, appealing instead that they take advantage of the opportunity to improve their harvest. And still ahead on the news at 10, FIFA suspends Ghana Football Association president from football for 90 days for accepting cash gifts. That's in sports news. Stay with us. <laughs>